Welcome to Goose Cat List. This is a list of six South African sports stars who never reached our expectations. This list does not focus on the expectations of just sporting fans, but the expectations of coaching staffs that kept on selecting these athletes. And we aren't even saying that these six athletes are bad. We're not even saying that these athletes are average, even though some opinionated members of our society may think that some of them are bang average. We're just saying that these athletes could have done more. I'm Bulele Kote from the Goose Cat Corner and let's begin our list of six South African sports stars who never reached our full expectations. Number six, Patrick Lambie. I can already hear Sharks fans losing their minds over Brad Pat, who was a talented so-and-so when he first made his professional debut. He first made waves in the eyes of South African rugby when he made the SA Under-18 school side two years in a row and immediately joined the Sharks Academy right after that in 2008. He had a successful debut year for the Sharks on the 21 side as he scored a healthy 192 points that season. When he made his debut for the Sharks' first team the following year, this saw them ending a losing streak and kicking off a five-game winning streak. Fast forward to 2012, he found himself fifth on the Super Rugby point scorers table. This was all roses and that saw him being called up to join the South African national side. This is where things went downhill for Patrick Lambie. Because at this time, South African selectors picked their players based on age and the amount of caps they had. You know, like how someone does when it comes to a relationship. This saw him being benched for the starting fullback at the time who was Zane Kirshner. Let that kick in. He was benching for Zane Kirshner. It's understandable that Lambie was 21 at the time. But if you think about it now, Jody Barrett is 20 and he got his chance to be the starting fullback for New Zealand. And look where that's placed him on the rankings. Yep, you guessed it number one it didn't help that he was a utility back as well so he had to bench for morning stay in a fly off the emergence of younger talented uh, players such as jesse creel and Henry pollard have placed the one sharks captain on the back of the selector's mind Lambie hasn't been bad the man does have all 50 caps for the country he just didn't live up to our expectations number five bernard parker 31-year-old Kaiser Chief striker, 31-year-old Kaiser Chief striker Bernard Melvin Parker was once the Premier Soccer League's goal scorer in 2012-2013. Granted, this was only 12 goals. Now let that sink in. The league's top scorer had barely passed 10 goals. No wonder Bafana Bafana can't score goals against countries such as Cape Verde and can only qualify to tournaments by hosting them. Imagine being only invited to parties because you are going to be the host. Anyway, Bernard Parker started his career at Tanner Royal Zulu. His performances got attention from outside the continent and saw him make a move in 2009 to Serbian side, Red Star Balgrader, who then sold him a year later to FC Twente in the Netherlands. This was kind of a great move for Parker as his side was in a good shape at the time as he competed in Europe. He spent two years at the club. You'd think that that would be quite impressive. He only made 17 appearances for them in the two years. Luckily, he came back to South Africa to play for the Soweto Giants Kaiser Chiefs and saw him playing for Bafana Bafana, the South African international side. But like his fellow colleagues who play a friend for Bafana Bafana, his goal drop was dried on your uncle's lips when you aren't lifting. I'm sorry, I was just trying to make a Vaseline joke. I didn't mean to be mean to your uncle. I'm sorry about your uncle's divorce. But moving on, number four, LB Morkel. Johannes Albertus Morkel better known as Albi Morkel or Mornay Morkel's brother, is a South African cricketer who was once proclaimed to be the next Lance Klusner because he knew how to send the ball over the boundary with ease. He was also a weird all-rounder who bats with his left but bowls with his right hand. All in all, you add all his caps for both Test and ODI matches for South Africa, it adds up to 380, which is quite impressive. The downside here lies in the stats. As a bowler, he wasn't racking up the wickets like his brother Mornay. He wasn't getting five wicket holes, and he wasn't scoring runs like A.B. de Villiers. And it didn't help that, even though he didn't live up to expectations when he kept, when it comes to playing for his country, he has been doing wonders in the domestic scene. As of last year, he was lighting things up with the rising Pune Super Giants in India. Number three, Fahan Behardin. Fahan Behardin is a T20 captain for South Africa. I don't want to knock his leadership skills because I've never had a conversation with him. Maybe he's a good guy and a great motivational speaker and knows how to lead a locker room. His performances before the Titans have been quite stellar, especially with the bat. He was even named player of the season of the T20 Challenge in May 2017. 
So surely he has reached his full potential, right? Nope. On the international front, he hasn't been producing the same stats as his, his domestic run. For a cricketer who is regarded as an all-rounder who managed, managed to get 30 wickets in T20 matches and his batting average of 28.30 in these T20 matches, I guess South Africa needs him because he is a good leader. Hopefully, things start to swing his way, which is something he doesn't do when he pulls up with his slow medium pace bowling. Number 2. Mark Mayambela Mark Mayambela had the potential to be a superstar. He broke into the PSL in 2007 as a striker for Bloemfontein Celtics. He was easily regarded as one of the most skillful strikers the league has ever seen. Just go on YouTube and type Mark Mayambela. You'll be amazed by the amount of people he has sent for a hot dog. Unfortunately, he suffers from the same syndrome that other South African strikers face. He's allergic to finding the back of the net. There was even hope that he would end up as a superstar when he made his big money move to Soweto Giants Orlando Pirates. But he just couldn't get into the regular spot of the team and saw him moving to Mbumalanga Black Aces in 2013. From 2013 till present day, he applied his trade for five different clubs, which are Mbumalanga Black Aces, Geo Gardens IF, Chipa United, Supersport United, and finally settling at Ajax Cape Town, where he still plays currently. With the emergence of other talented South African strikers, I doubt he will ever have a chance to apply his trade for his own country. Number 1. Ruan Pina I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. Bambulero, he's a World Cup winner. He's won the Tri-Nations. He's even beat the British and Irish Lions. That's all true. But let it sink in that Victor Valdez has two European titles and a World Cup to his name while applying his trade for Spain. But we all know that he is leakier than a bank account controlled by South African politicians. Ruan Pina has been part of great teams, we can't deny that, but he's never established guaranteed starting positions while playing in South Africa. While playing for the Sharks, he can never have a position that was guaranteed for him. He lost his fly position to Butch James, and later the previously mentioned Patrick Lambie, and was moved to fullback position when the Sharks realized Rory Cockett was a better scrum off and better goal kicker than he was. With this in mind, he still got selected for the South African side, where he ended up benching for the immortal Fourier Dupree and the fly-off position and kicking duties were taken over by Mornay Stang, who had a successful run. He was always coming off the bench for, the, for both club and country, and from 88 Springbok caps, he ended up with 135 points to, to his name. You think that's great, but compare that to Mornay Stang, who got his debut two years later after Ruan Pina, made 66 caps for South Africa, and ended up with 736 points to his name. So, Ron Pina has 22 more caps than Mornay Stain, but is a whopping 601 points behind him. But things have looked up for him when he moved to Ulster in 2010 and managed to get 877 points in 141 appearances for them, and now he has started his new life in Montpellier. That's six South African sports stars who never lived up to their full potential and our expectations. If you know of any other players who never lived up to our expectations and their full potential, please comment below. For more lists like this, please subscribe to the channel and follow the Goose Cat Corner on Twitter, Instagram, and give us some suggestions on what you would want to hear. I've been Willow Lopoto from the Goose Cat Corner, and thank you for watching.